Normalization with the Arab and Islamic world continues, with new reports in Israeli media saying that Prime Minister Netanyahu and Foreign Minister Eli Cohen are in negotiations to add four more nations to the Abraham Accords. That would be Indonesia, Somalia, Niger, and Mauritania. While attempts at establishing relations with Saudi Arabia have cooled somewhat, the U.S. and Europe are working with Israel and the aforementioned states to expand diplomatic agreements. But all of them are acknowledging that the security situation at the Flashpoint Temple Mount could throw a wrench in the works if it gets out of control this year. For so much more on this, we are joined by Middle East correspondent Ariel Osaran. Thank you again for joining us. Let's just jump right into it. How relevant are the four countries in question? Well, Ariel, as you said in, in your lead, it, th these aren't the main goals of, of the Abraham Accords process. The crown jewel obviously being the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That's being put on ice right now for various reasons. But in the meantime, Israel is continuing to try and expand this uh, wave of normalization. And the fact that it's with four Muslim majority countries, I think that is a point of reference. Now, this is based on a report in Israel Yom today. But we did look into this, and our sources acknowledge that Israel is indeed engaged with uh, additional Muslim countries to try and expand uh, Israel's official diplomatic ties with them, but things are still at a very early stage. Now, if we look at the report in Israel Ayom, the um, ne negotiations with Mauritania are in the most advanced stages. Now, the two, Israel and Mauritania, did used to have uh, diplomatic relations established in 1999, but those were cut in 2008 during to war in Gaza, which tends to happen mm -hmm. for Israel and its Muslim partners. Now, Somalia, that's interesting because Israel and Somalia have never had diplomatic I mean, ties. It's basically a failed state. Indeed, but also its positioning on the uh, between the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean, the entrance to the Red Sea that is important to Israel. And in over the past year, we have seen reports that have said that Somalia's president, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, is interested in establishing uh, ties with Israel. As for uh, Niger, um, Israel also has never had diplomatic relations with them, despite two short stints. Uh, there have been no real efforts and until now, if indeed this is correct, to try and establish those. And I think perhaps the most interesting country, and this is Indonesia, the most populous Muslim mm -hmm. country in the world, is that Israel and Indonesia do not have formal diplomatic ties, but they do maintain quiet trade and uh, tourism relations. So it, indeed this uh, appears to be, according to this report, uh, perhaps the, the next step of Israel's attempts to try and expand uh, the normalization efforts with other countries, but uh, it is important to to make sure that if indeed this this is happening, it's still in the very early stages. Well, one of the big questions is, while this is an attempt to really maneuver into getting Saudi Arabia on board with the Abraham Accords, how, given the threat of Iran, particularly against Saudi Arabia, have those accords cooled so much in the past year? Well, I mean, it, th there's a lot of different aspects to these accords. There's the diplomatic aspect, and indeed, these four countries are not in the same tier of uh, regional influence as Saudi Arabia is. But at the end of the day, each one pr represents a finger at the UN, a vote in the UN. And a vote is a vote, and any vote that Israel can feel that is being swayed to its direction is considered a diplomatic achievement. But, you know, if we're also looking at other aspects of the Abraham Accords, we're talking about business ties, we're talking about trade, we're talking about different cooperations in, in various fields of education, science, research and development. Those are main are, are continuing and perhaps those are the big are, are the fields that we're seeing the most advancement and, and, and tightening, warming of ties between Israel and its newly found partners. Indeed, the Iranian issue, especially with a country like the UAE, which is Iran's made biggest trade partner, it makes things a, a lot more complicated, that's for sure.